Americans really want to see President Joe Biden tax the rich. That's according to new polling by John Anzalone, quote, few issues receive broader support than raising taxes on corporations and people earning more than $400,000 a year, which is why some of Biden's advisors are encouraging him to be more vocal about taxing corporations and taxing the rich. Founder of Nuestro PAC, President and Founder of Solidarity Strategies, author of T.O. Bernie, former senior advisor to the Sanders campaign, Chuck Rocha, and White House reporter for Galeria Kill Politics, Philip Wegman. They join us now to discuss. Chuck, let me start with you. I found this polling pretty fascinating because Biden's pollster making an open signal to the White House saying, hey, like, you guys are in the clear, you know, just say you can talk as much as you possibly want about taxing the rich and it's overwhelmingly popular. What did you make of the polling itself and what it says about um, politics and that the Biden people need a push in order to begin talking this way? Well, my first reaction was very collegial and very philosophical, and it was, duh, <laughs> I what we've been talking about for a long time. I don't know if you've heard, but yeah. uh, Bernie Sanders was pretty popular <laughs> talking about the billionaires and the millionaires and we need to tax the rich. Right. Now, it's not just the Bernie bros. Let me be clear. Lots of working class people in America. Let me go a step further. I own a small business. I get taxed at the individual rate. I've got five employees and I pay 48 percent taxes. That's 38 percent federal mm -hmm. taxes and that's 10 percent D.C. taxes. And I know I'm sounding like a right wing radical here, but I am a progressive left wing consultant who owns a small business who is saying, why do I have to pay 48 cents? Well, big corporations like Amazon and Walmart and these other places aren't paying hardly anything. And why is there's all this wealth that I hear about on TV being built in all these corporate CEOs corner suites when small businessmen like me have made it through the COVID crisis, but paid half of what we've made in taxes? Like that's the part that drives working middle class Americans red blue and independent, absolutely crazy. And Anna Anzalone is right. He should be talking about this at every turn, talking about how the system is rigged. That's the, the terminology we used with Bernie that was get independents in to vote for him. That actually get working class Latinos in Texas to vote for him to say, the system is rigged against the working class woman and man, and we need to fix that. And it's a winning formula for everyone. Listen, Democrats, I'm knocking on your door. It's free today. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Phil, I also think it's kind of puts the GOP in a tough spot because they want to paint Democrats. Oh, they're going to increase your taxes. But by drawing this line, and by the way, I think they drew the line too high at 400. But they've put themselves politically in the clear here. Two thirds of Americans support raising taxes on those making 400,000 or more. That includes 70 percent of independents and about half of Republicans. So if you're the GOP, how do you message against that? The Republican bet here, and we've seen this play out thus far, is yes, the American public is in favor of higher taxes and taxation. Uh, but the Republican bet here is, well, the public is not going to be in favor of those same taxes once they figure out that only you know five or six percent of the infrastructure package is going to roads and bridges. That's how Republicans are going to mm -hmm. attack this. We'll see whether or not that works out. But I think... Uh, back to um, you know, what we're talking about in terms of Biden's pollster, I think that the Biden administration is walking a very clever line here when they say, yes, we want to raise taxes on anyone, uh, well, anyone making more than $400,000, uh, which includes families, by the way. But uh, I think that what is interesting here is in the speech that Biden gave, he was very clear to say that he doesn't begrudge millionaires and billionaires. He believes in capitalism. But he wants mm. the tax code to be more fair. I think that that type of mollifying language where he says, I don't begrudge success. Um, I, I don't oppose anyone for being a millionaire or billionaire, but I want a fair playing field. That's the sort of thing that you hear. And, um, you know, rather than looking at you know taxation charts and um, right. sort of the graphs, you just think, no, that that is fundamentally fair. Right. Um, I think that, you know, the White House has played this one pretty smart thus far. Let me follow up with you there, Phil, um, in your t strategy there about the infrastructure package. I've seen a lot of this like memes around everything is infrastructure. Jill Brand, you know, doesn't do herself any favors with ridiculous tweets. But in terms of the response, uh, I heard the same thing. When the American people figure out what's in the COVID relief package, it will be unpopular. That just simply like has not played out mm -hmm. whatsoever. Um, if anything, it's more popular. So on the infrastructure package, do you see that same bet as politically like a real one to make in order to try and gin up some organic support? And I stress organic there because they can try, you know, in terms of the funded groups or whatever, but they're looking for their Obamacare moment. And I just don't see it right now. 
I'm not sure if they're looking for their Obamacare moment so much as they're looking for their sh- uh, shovel-ready jobs moment. Yeah, uh, right, fourteen hundred dollar right. check to an individual is going to be popular because it shows up in your mailbox or it shows up in your bank account, and you have an immediate tangible effect. However, telling a um, voter, well, you know, it was good that this multi-million dollar project went to that corporation to allow for whether you know, any stripe of infrastructure we're calling to say, you know, that somehow stimulates the economy. When there's an indirect pass through there, I think that that's when people, you know, start to, to get envious and wonder, you know, what is actually happening here. But, um, you know, the, the advantage that, that Biden has over Obama um, in, in dealing with, you know, these moments of economic crisis is, you know, Obama's advisors were telling him to save the economy, you have to save Wall Street. And, mm-hmm. Biden doesn't have to do something that is going to uh, churn the stomach of the American people. The American people think, I'm going to drive on those roads and bridges. I'm Mm -hmm. going to use these services. This is going to help my life, not, oh, this is going to go to some fat cat somewhere else. I think that that's an advantage for him. Um, And uh, Republicans continue to ask voters to, you know, do the reading in the bill. Uh, Their their mileage may vary. Yeah. <laughs> Chuck, I think the other thing that's interesting here in this frame is something I've been thinking a lot about is so far the Biden people have framed the pay fors in this infrastructure package is just that a means to the end. We need to get the money to pay for this thing. So we came up with this basket of potential tax increases. What the polling is saying is no, no. You don't frame this as like we're just being fiscally responsible and coming up with this pay fors. Frame it as an affirmatively positive thing. We are raising taxes on rich people and corporations, and we're proud of it. And we're doing it because that in and of itself is something that's fair and that people want and will help to rebalance the scales. And I actually do think that that shift in how you think about and how you talk about these things matters. It matters greatly. And I was just thinking while you were talking then about the messaging of it, right? And we get this so wrong all the time. And we let the Republicans just say Democrats want to raise your taxes to your being working class, middle class folks who already feel like they're overtaxed and get nothing for that taxation. And to your point, if you were to be very direct and like take a Donald Trump and put it on the front of a baseball hat that says tax only the rich, tax only the rich. Because when you say but and then have to start explaining what you're doing to your point about, oh, we're doing this to pay for this, we're doing, you already have lost the American voter. Mm -hmm. Us Democrats way too complicate things. We way want to get into bullet points and policy procedures and all the things that are the auspice of everything that has to go with any kind of a policy analysis. When the American voter just wants to know, what are you going to do to fix this system that is helping those folks and leaving me behind? Because they feel like they're being left behind. And the American voter has been so frustrated. They've been to Barack Obama. They've been then to Donald Trump. They just keep looking for a solution to the over uh, the overarching problem, which is, what are you going to do to help me? Yep. I feel no relief. F- uh, fat cats are getting fatter. They're getting richer while I'm struggling harder and harder. And then I had to live through a pandemic. What are you going to do? Democrats tell them every day what you're going to do. That's yeah. an excellent, excellent point there on messaging. Yeah, yeah and we, really. we looked at the polling on how people feel about billionaires. And the one thing that really united people is they did not think it was fair the way that billionaires prospered during the pandemic while everybody else was struggling. So I think it would be very satisfying for a lot of people to feel like a little tiny piece of that was getting clawed back to the benefit of the American people. Guys, it's always great to see you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Mm-hmm. More rising for you after this.